because I did that. Like the stress level, which was not like super intense, but still there, just went like a notch down. Yeah. So it become even like even yeah. nicer to actually work in that That's environment. Like anything, so like the anticipation of something, you just like you have such a high expectation that you have to meet. If you can surpass that and just forget about it, or just yeah. get it done to a place where you are good, it's like yeah. whatever I do after this doesn't matter. Like it's just yeah. icing, mm -hmm. icing on the cake. Yeah, basically. no, yeah. definitely. Yeah, but I, I think as well because like I mean for me like uh, at work I don't get three hours to like sit down and just sculpt mm. because I mean to run around everywhere people yeah. come up ask you questions and stuff and for me it was kind of like oh man I've got three hours just to sit here That's and sculpt be awesome. headphones on and like when the music comes on oh, yeah, man. I was bouncing my head, like, you know, yeah. that's my trip, <laughs> you know, like, like, <laughs> I'm going with this. Yeah. So, that's so, yeah, so no. great, man. Well, I mean, the, the, the awards is going to be tonight. So best of luck to both of you guys. Cool. Thanks, Thank man. You. Hopefully it's Thank not you. too much of a competition between you both. No, I, no. You guys seem I mean, just, just the fact that we made it. Yeah, man, that's it. I think for me, like, I think I already won, you know, just being like with amazing other like sculptures and all and just like the experience i mean yeah. that's for me it's like the journey more than anything that's else so so, to hear. so yeah i no. think everybody shares that same sentiment really. yeah like there's i don't think there's anybody here that's coming in to like really just want to like destroy everybody they just want to be here and everybody yeah. seems to just love it no yeah. that's it that's yes. it and and i think i think you're the same but like you know it's been like what like two or three years or even more that we've been like watching the summit and the sculpt off yeah. and every year we're just like oh man i <sighs> wish i could you know because when you, there's nothing worse than seeing someone doing it and then you just you, you know, know you got like this i want to jump in i want to try it, it, and wanna wanna try it out, out. And, and, yeah. and to be honest with you i was like applying i think at least like two years yeah. before like this year mm -hmm. and and i wasn't like picked up so it was like it's not like for the lack of trying it's yeah, just like it's it wasn't clicking in so yeah. when it clicked in like it's for this year man yeah, that yeah. was that must have been so awesome and, and man that was it both of us to be in it as well it was like oh man like all that time that we were like practicing yeah. speed, speed sculpting yeah, we that's get it. to actually that's do it, it together so right. because he was pushing me since he actually came to the summit last year he was yeah. like pushing me to say man you, you got to show up you got to show up like next year man it's gonna be it's gonna you know it's amazing so you're missing out so so i was just like I don't know, dude. And and, and, <laughs> I don't and, know, dude. and and I was just like, I was just like, yeah. And and since I tried like two other years before, I said, you know, I get the feeling that if I don't get picked up with the sculpt off, it might not happen because yeah. Yeah. I needed like that kind of like strong reason to go, yeah, to go. Yeah. And then yeah, my girlfriend was really amazing because as soon as I, you know, I heard that I was like being considered to be, you know, for the sculpt off, then you know, I, I was like, actually, I was I rent, rented like a chalet and we're like in a, in a date. You know away with the kids and i was just like you know they asked me like to and she was just like okay i'm gonna pay for your trip and what? you're gonna get there and i was just so like sweet are, are you yeah, yeah i was yeah. like oh that are you are you for real and she was yeah yeah you know it's gonna you know because my birthday is coming up and also i was just like man everything is aligning you know yeah. so i got Stars i got to show up man i am yeah. in it man that's so that awesome was, that's yeah, really yeah. beautiful i love that well yeah. i mean you guys are great we love your energy i mean you guys are obviously bringing something here that like it's it's a it's a special experience, I can definitely tell. Yeah, yeah. That's no, awesome, it's man. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm it's happy great. for you both. Yeah, oh, thank yeah, you, yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but man, it's, now. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 no, but it's one of the things, you know, you should we hug? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh we'll get, we get yeah. told off to tap in the table. Like, yeah, that's it. So, uh, it's going to be like a, you know, yeah, like yeah, a yeah, remote yeah, hug, oh, like a remote. But, yeah, but. Well, you guys got to tell me, you got to tell me a little bit about Quebec City because you guys are both at Ubisoft in Quebec City. Yeah, yes. man. Um, yep. So tell me about your positions. What do you guys both do there? I guess, Ashley, do you cool. want to go first? Well, I'm a lead character artist there on uh, Gods and Monsters so okay. on this project. So yeah. first time being a lead on a project. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty sweet. Oh, that's pretty exciting. Sweet. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. yeah it's uh, it's crazy, but it's... I can uh, imagine. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah. I love it. And he's doing an amazing job, too. Nice. I mean, that's great. For someone that got, like, in the kind of a quick position like that and and with such kind of ma mandate i think he I think that's great nice. so how yeah. about you said <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm a senior senior character artist on gods and monster with him and um so you guys yeah. work pretty close together yeah pretty yeah. much yeah because yeah the studio is not that big no so. i had to run across the across the uh, thing. <laughs> yeah we're not like, physically together uh, yeah but yeah how big is the studio space how many artists do you guys have I mean, I mean, character artists. artists? Yeah, character artists, like, environments, all of that. Oh. I mean, for characters, yeah. with there's nine of us. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. environments, oh man. Probably quite a lot. Like, yeah, a lot. Triple yeah, that, maybe. A lot more. Yeah. I think, how many in the studio? It's like four, 
400? Yeah, 450? we're tempted to see something yeah. like that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so you guys are close in terms of uh, you're communicating via Slack, maybe. Or yeah. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. No, it's just because, it's like, like the, way, the, two, way, yeah, the way the production works, yeah, like, we we're, like, kind teams. of separate. Yeah, kind of, it's, like, per co cluster or, like, yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of, like, mm -hmm. hard to explain, but basically, like, we got, like, a different kind of teams within like pods and basically we're just like not physically sitting together but we're just like basically at two other ends of the building so i see yeah so you just so need I'm, uh, I'm i'm never at my desk yeah. i'm like always running between like checking teams, everybody teams, else yeah like, and okay. then running upstairs to the gods yeah. to make sure they're all happy and then <laughs> yeah. running back down and giving yeah. like, your offerings I and do, <laughs> yeah i think i do like about like ten thousand yeah. steps in like a yeah. day that's like, pretty great just, man. Like, you got, track you, it, man. Like, do you, you got, like those muscular legs man and everyone's like you don't you never walk anywhere i was like ain't got time to walk but yeah no that's the thing so you never know like if there's an uh, an emergency with ash that's because he's just like running all the time so you just yeah. like that yeah, just you know that's a regular yeah, that's, right. it. that's, that's great. great well i feel like that's a good characteristic in a lead you know because oh. if you can just make everybody seem like at ease and not feel like it's crazy yeah that's got to be a big help because yeah. if it's like <laughs> sculpted off like tension all the time yeah. it's probably hard to get work done yeah no, i can no, imagine really. so you guys uh, we can talk about i mean god of monsters you guys can't talk too much about it's a that's a, a new um story that you guys are working on yeah yeah um but your last project was god of war i'm sorry um god of war. <laughs> sorry oh, yeah. i said oh, Raphael oh, today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i didn't remember it was amazing yeah. 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 Really it was amazing yeah. 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 the team did a really great job yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um yeah. odyssey assassin's creed odyssey yeah. which i actually just got into myself recently i was so late on it but man yeah. it's a great game it yeah. really Thanks, is dude. yeah it got a lot of high praise I, ign still talks about it oh, so yeah. oh yeah that's, for sure i listened to a couple of their podcasts and a lot of those guys over there love it yeah yeah but um yeah so can you guys tell me a little bit about what you guys worked on for that project yeah so i mean we did pretty much all of the characters that is probably like the only only game i've really worked on where we hadn't outsourced anything so, oh, so you did it all like, in-house well, like a couple of things except the like the the Mythical, oh, the creatures? mythical creatures but that's yeah. the only thing that we didn't do in house but, but uh yeah you know, all the rest of it like npcs main characters yeah. outfits all that yeah all that's, internal, that's amazing so you guys do in terms of uh you guys don't work in any conceptual design you guys are working on production assets right yeah okay. so yeah because we like have concept artists and yep. stuff like yeah. that yeah but so. of course like it's always kind of loose depending on which we're, what we're working sometimes we'll just do like back and forth let's yeah. just say like the concept artists come up like with the uh, concept then we'll do like kind of quick sculpt and then after that send it back sometimes not so, all the suits but some of the suits might get like that kind of treatment so kind of so like revisions back and forth yeah it's yeah. like kind yeah. of try to leverage like the mm -hmm. the 3d side like the basically the character artist side and the concept artist side because yeah. you know both of them are artists and yeah. like a 2d concept might work but a 3d one might be so we're like trying to leverage it so oh, the, interesting. Like the, yeah. the so you don't you don't kind of force yourself to stick it to one medium you can actually kind of use both or whatever yeah. works yeah. best for the project yeah, pretty yeah. much oh that's great i think, I think the result actually show up like better after yeah. so yeah. yeah yeah i do see a lot of uh, conceptual artists seem to be using a lot of 3d now and i just would think that it might be a lot easier for a concept artist to kind of block something out and then pass it off to a production artist but maybe in that case it doesn't work yeah. in a um, production pipeline i mean we did it a few times with some of the some of the creatures like um gadpa character concept artist who was doing the uh the cyclops i think trying to get the head right for the cyclops yeah spoilers like sorry <laughs> yeah, I'm spoilers. The i feel like There's the game's been out the for quite a while yeah. okay. <laughs> spoilers <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah like he was like trying to work out some stuff and then um yeah then he plied it over to us and we like kind of like took it and took it to the next level yeah so, yeah but, yeah what was your guys favorite but, part about that game uh, you know what it's it's pretty cool because none of the heads that we use for scan data they were like That's literally amazing. all like sculpted in zbrush and yeah stuff. so for me it was like kind of nice to be able to get like a really good quality with heads with by sculpting it by, by actually sculpting it yeah. which a lot of times a lot of people will do scan data to save time yeah was that just because you had more time in production well um, I think it was because we all just wanted a sculpt heads. Oh, guess. that's awesome. Right, so and I think the aesthetic as well, you know, that's one thing like to use scan heads, but usually you, know, you need to do a lot of clean up and all, but, but sometimes you don't retain that kind of like charisma. I don't know if you, you know, you saw like yesterday the presentation with uh, 
Beyond Good and Evil. Uh, I saw parts of it, but I didn't catch all okay. of it yet. I was but, doing an episode. But basically, back here. Pascal was showing like you know what a scan data versus like the revised one, and and you could clearly see like a good gap in between, and 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 yeah, starting from scratch like with the new ad, it definitely give you like something. I would tempt, I would be tempted to say that it's like something with more personality. Mm. Like you can like get a, a character in it. So yeah. yeah. Not saying that scan's bad or anything like no, that. No. Yeah. But it's it. You know, it's a different. You get like a different result. Sure. Yeah, different vibe. So, yeah, yeah, so Beyond Good and Evil, yeah. I guess that's a good reference because they are, it's so character driven and they're going from like real, like conceptual references. It looked like, like I saw the, I don't know the pig's character's name, but it was like they went through multiple iterations and they even had like a, like a physical representation. It was like a, like a, like an anchor. It was like this, like, like angular, almost like Pentagon shaped, like metal thing that was like supposed to represent this character, which is yeah. like, that's a really cool way to connect the dots. And like, it adds another layer to the yeah, character no, design that like yeah. makes it so much more personal, right? Yeah. 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 And I get that with scan data. It's like, if you have a lot of assets that you just have to shortcut time, that's just what happens a yeah. lot of times, yeah. right? But yeah, yeah. that's great for you guys that you actually got to do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's absolutely. amazing. Yeah. And so it's, I mean, you're dealing with a lot of human assets. Did you guys, the, you said the creature, all the creature designs are outsourced? Yeah. yeah so it's ju just due to time, if we, yeah. We kind of kept uh, because the system for like the when we built the outfits, it it's not a normal system that mm. you're used to. It was all built on like a layer system. Okay. So literally, you could have like any belts with any torso with any cape with shoulder pads. Yeah, yeah. Helmet. Yeah. So it's just like a, it was a system really like thinking about like uh, to customize as much as you could. So on top of just having like texture swap, you could have like elements like. Uh, like he was saying, like torso piece with like shoulder piece, you could mix and match. And oh, because of that, you could, and that you could populate as much as on the hero, as much as in the world yeah. on other characters, like That's NPCs amazing. and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. have like a lot of diversity. What so. kind of tools do you use for that? Is there like a, do you kind of just visualize that with images or you do that with like 3D? So we, we had like a, an in house tool that um, okay. our tech artist, yeah. um, character tech artist yeah. made. And it was, uh, you know, it's, Sometimes it was a little bit difficult to be like, okay, is this actually gonna work? Like, uh -huh. but uh, yeah, no, it worked was out. A, was like kind it's of a art of work, a lot of work, yeah, but a lot uh, of bug fixing. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. A lot yeah. of bug fixing. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not yeah. like the usual, okay, it's clipping, so we just move the vertices. Because if it's clipping on this piece, it might not clip on, the, you know, yeah. on right, seven because it's others. being swapped with the other Yeah, ones exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, the whole approach was like quite different. But I see. Yeah, and yeah, basically, we would just like usually we would just like have like one concept of a full outfit. Yeah. We would create it, and then we would like test fit it, it, and, and then sure. you know try to make it work with all the other. Yeah, yeah. we had outfits. like uh, templates to to use and build off of those templates. Oh, that's amazing. So, yeah, we still use like ZBrush and um, like uh, primarily I just use ZBrush and Marvelous Designer and yeah. retopologize in. And then rework all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So you guys spend and that one's that's a big project where you're spending a lot of time with like clothing and drapery and just like that kind of stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. creating yeah. pin tones and uh -huh. uh, he makes shots that like, man, like because it's like a certain way that you have to like fold the cloth. And right. We, yeah. we got yeah. taught how to how to fold wrap the stuff and fold yeah. and stuff. And Greece was pretty much all about drapery, you know, like yeah. all mm -hmm. that, uh, like those yeah. kind of. A, so yeah, for sure. And right. even like back then, I know that you know some of them. Are, we're, we're like holding it in a certain way because they, you know since they yeah. didn't have like t-shirt with like logos on it that mm -hmm. was like a way to have it like more custom per person yeah so yeah. they would all put like the, the the fold like in a certain way depending on who they were so right so they get like a sort of aesthetic that works for like specific characters yeah. and the yeah. other ones have different ones yeah definitely yeah. And it was really hard as well because like we're so used to like when creating characters to be like putting like loads of detail in and like stitches and stuff mm -hmm. like that but because it's like based on real life Greece. Like a lot of the time we couldn't put stitches in things or couldn't make trousers yeah. because trousers didn't exist. They didn't then. have those. Yeah. yeah. And like with stitches, like you couldn't you couldn't do like literally like proper stitches. Like mm -hmm. you would have to be like, okay, it would be like pinned pinned in and oh, stuff like that. Yeah. So it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, so it's like it's kind of own like like form language and right like and you have to sort of figure that out when you're going through like sort of design choices right and figure yeah. out how to apply that stuff when you're sculpting or whatever yeah, yeah a lot of that is much. just mapped out i guess you're using maps to extract out those things and have it show yeah 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 that's interesting it's great that you actually can there's sort of like a historical element in there too where you kind of like 
probably get to know more about the style of clothing in that yeah. era than you yeah. ever would. But let's face it, like with stuff like Marvelous Designer and all, since we're yeah. actually like, it's all a flat like background, you know, basically you need to understand how the clothing is <laughs> actually made to be, yeah. To, yeah. so that it will react properly. So that's why there's no resource, but just like to try to dig in and then try to yeah. investigate mm -hmm. how, how to create that. So. Yeah. And the thing is you can't fake it because the moment you try and fake it, you can tell it doesn't look right when you're like looking at it in reference. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, that's... Just that's logically right. doesn't make sense. And, yeah. yeah. And since yeah. they're barely wearing anything, yeah. I mean, that's, like, that up, that's the first thing that shows be, up. You know, like it's, uh, you cannot hide yeah. it with like other pieces. It's it's yeah. right there. So yeah, for sure. Do you guys spend a lot of time uh, like in the ZBrush side? Do you guys have like I always wonder with studios? Do you have uh, like do you guys create libraries of brushes or things like that? Like sculpting seams brushes where that you guys share these kinds of assets and work on these together? Yeah. I mean, we've got um, like especially yeah. for the clothing stuff, we've kind of like got uh, like a certain package of brushes that we use yeah. yeah and like some things like some people might go oh yeah i made a brush like a z yeah like a z tool for this mm -hmm. but sometimes like right now it's a weird time for like you know game production because you know we use a lot of a uh, substance painter mm -hmm. and there's so many cool tools like you know let's just select stitches yeah now you got like the choice of going with stitches like right on the iris sculpt and then just like put them back in yeah and then like baking this up and then that's it yeah but then you got like the other option which is actually you go to substance painter you do like a stitching brush and then you put like a height on it mm. so it, it bumps out yeah and then you put it so okay you know the, the stitches like from the distance that we look at it yeah. are way too big or way too small yeah then you can just like change it on right on the fly if it's yeah. baked in then you're stuck with it right and the I other see. thing is like by painting it like that you can actually assign a specific color to that of course you could always like do a color id with insert imm brush right. with stitches in zbrush to try to compensate but mm. yeah that's always like kind of a depends on really on what the artist prefers i see but there's like kind of like more than one avenue to actually to get mm -hmm. to the the best results oh so. and that's like like that with a lot of things even just in zbrush alone you know, there's a lot of different yeah, ways no, you can do one thing. Yeah. Right? You yeah. see that a lot, like the sculpt app. Yeah. like, yeah. best thing about it is everybody's kind of trying out their ways of doing but, stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, but the way I see it with ZBrush, I always thought it was like almost like a, you know, I've, I've been always like doing like martial arts, like Muay Thai and that yeah, kind okay. of stuff. And uh, I felt like ZBrush is really like, a, you know, like martial art, like Kung Fu. Basically, there's I've all never kind heard of, it talked uh, about that way Yeah, before. but it, there's like all kind of like Kung Fu style. Mm. And every time you're just like, oh, okay, you're like, Fu Manchu kind of yeah. fighting style. And it's just <laughs> like, well, yeah, I'm doing like the style. crane style. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I've never seen that style. You know, like it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah. that's amazing. Like, yeah, you know, like yeah. everybody got like his way to actually practice the, the heart. So, yeah. It, it just doesn't hurt when it hits you. That's no, that's the thing. Only, only your heart when yeah, you yeah, yeah. Maybe, like, yeah. <laughs> maybe your ego, no. if you really go, if it really goes wrong. But I mean, uh, if you're yeah. really doing it the wrong way, like if you're doing every single stitch one by one by one, and yeah. then somebody shows you like an IMM curve brush, you're like, man, that hurts. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've been doing it that way for yeah. a really no, long but time. No, it, 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 it hurts for the you know in the good sense. So yeah. mm -hmm. that's yeah. very true. Uh, yeah. That's very true. Yeah, I'm just always curious about that. Do you, as far as uh, Ubisofts go? Like watching Ubisoft Paris yesterday, they were showing similar stuff, showing Marvelous, and but they were using a lot of Z Modeler mm -hmm. to do things like up signing in like specific things for seams. I don't know if you guys watched their presentation. Yeah, yeah, like, um, pieces, yeah, yeah. like that kind of stuff. Do you guys share ideas and things like that across each other? Or are these kind of like localized to just your I internal th teams? I think, I think within like different studios, like uh, we don't really get to interact that much with, I uh, mean, unless it's. Unless we're all working on the same project. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, sometimes like a team from like another studio will come yeah, down come to a specific studio just like for a few days just to check around. But mm -hmm. it's yeah. really like really in depth. It's like more like the big picture, how, how the pipeline works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If there's like something really specific that might have like a big impact. Yeah. Yes. Oh, but enough. most of the time, it's really more like a like just like those guys. We didn't know them like before we came to the yeah. summit. Right. And basically we talked to each other and then we try to you know, like sync up like a Skype thing or, you know, go yeah. there directly and then yeah, learn about that stuff. thing specifically. Yeah. yeah. Because if not, then yeah, it's, it's, it's not like it's a, I think it's too hard like to track down like that, yeah. that sort of stuff. Although they do, Ubisoft do do like a, like a GDC thing, but it's called UDC. UDC? Like, yeah. 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 Okay. So like it's all of the studios. And you can all meet up together and yeah. have sort of like a yeah. conference. Yeah. It's yeah. mainly, yeah. mainly in Montreal that they, yeah. that's it. Yeah, and I think so. Like yeah. you guys go to this every year? 
Yeah, they do it every year. Yeah. Yeah. So I've never been to it. No, so um, yeah, I, I don't really. I don't it's not a do. mandatory thing. It's just like invite if you want to go. Yeah, yeah okay, pretty much. much. But yeah. that's the thing. It like most of the time, uh, I, I didn't see like a whole lot of things like artists. Yeah, it's more. You know, why is it's more like programming, uh, okay. game design, so more like that sort of stuff. Materials so and shaders yeah. and development yeah, side. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. Yeah, but, uh, that's interesting. Well, it's, as far as you guys being at Ubisoft, what were you both doing before this? Where did you guys, how did you, how long have you guys been at Ubisoft now? I've been there uh, three and a half years now, something like that. Yeah, yeah, three and a half years. Okay. So, uh, before then, I was at a, a, a company called Lionhead, working on Fable Legends. Oh, I know so, Fable Legends. I didn't know yeah. Lionhead. Yeah, yeah. it's, uh, well, it's it's no longer, they oh, they closed it down. Ah, so okay, that's unfortunate. There, there to the end. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we never got to release uh, Fable Legends. That's too bad. But, um, yeah. but then, yeah, uh, Ubisoft heard about Fable go um, Lionhead going down. Scooped you guys up. And, yeah, they were like, hey, ever thought about coming to Canada? And I was like, oh, <laughs> my God, yes. <laughs> Where was that and located? It was in uh, back in the UK, in okay. Guildford. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but, yeah, and I was like, I said to my wife, do you want to go to Canada? And she was like, yeah. Like, <laughs> so we were like... Yeah, they flew flew me out there, had the interview, and yeah, I've been. been That's there great. Since. So you've been so there for three and a half years. How about you, yeah. said? Uh, for me, like uh, Ubisoft in general, it, it was like a in Quebec. It's only been like two years, I think, and a half. But the thing is, like uh, when I started in the industry, I was like more in the VFX and film. Mm -hmm. and then I moved on. I, I had like the chance to actually get into Ubisoft Montreal in the cinematic department, mm -hmm. and then that's when like I spent like six years overall, like. I, I think I only spent like one year with the cinematic, but then after that I moved like with game production. Yeah. And then I spent like six years overall. Then I moved to Quebec City. I, I, you know, I was like trying to transfer from Ubisoft Montreal to Quebec City. Yeah. Ubisoft Quebec City, but you know, at that time no job was available, so I actually moved to Beanox, which they were working on Call of Duty Remastered. Okay. In Modern Warfare. So I worked there for I think a year and a half. And then I moved like to Quebec City, gotcha. uh, Ubisoft. That's great. Yeah. So you were working in cinematics for a little while. Yeah. That um, did you find that to be different to what you guys are doing now, just in terms of? You know. I would say yes, because like usually like the I feel like the game constraints for the game engine are a lot more restrictive mm -hmm. than the cinema cinematic one. Yeah. Usually like texture budget and all like just make it nice. You know, like there's no real like texture resolution or number of texture that you can use right and of course like you know you read topo as well and you know we're going through the the rigging just like in game but yeah in general it's just like make it pretty as yep. much as you can yeah so yeah no it's uh, i look forward to i mean this is a really hot time now for real time as it's getting better and better and games are looking so much better and, yeah. and you almost don't have to rely on cinematics now where you get yeah like very amazing results and i mean companies like blur and all the other ones that work on amazing cinematics are almost like their own sort of artwork and art form but then in the games world it's like you guys are in it's got to be an exciting time being in a company like ubisoft and yeah i'm sure i mean you can't talk about this project but projects like this i'm sure just getting better and better all the time and probably getting a little bit more uh sort of less restrictions i bet it's probably going up over time yeah 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 it's, yeah. Uh, definitely. it's definitely it's it's cool to see if like for example, on like Assassins, like yep. it was all in-game cinematics that yep. we did, and it's so cool because then you can, <clears throat> like, even though like we create all of our textures, like once they get in-game, they get crunched down to like a one K or something. Yeah. But you create it like at a four K, and then in the cinematics, they can push, right. push it. Yeah. So then you can see all like, oh, oh, the specular right. like, on the face yeah. and right. stuff like because that. Because cinematic. Or you know, they're still real time, but they're not like gameplay real time. Right. So it's they can, yeah. yeah. And usually, like, they don't display as as much asset mm -hmm. like, in the shot. So yeah. they got usually like they got more budget, like performance wise. Yeah, that's yeah, so. really cool. right. Yeah, right. So. Yeah, that's interesting. Do you guys, um, as far as like staying in games, do you guys like? I mean, as character artists, this is probably it's a good place to be because you have a lot of freedom to, um, you know, work go from one project to another. I mean, you guys spent how many years on Assassin's Creed Odyssey? Uh, so. Well, three years also. Yeah, but three years since yeah, I only got there in two years and a half. Yeah, you know, right, the so project was yeah. already going yeah, on when start I to finish, but you got through majority of it. It sounds like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I yeah. would say that. And then being able to go on to something new is sort of like a fresh start. Yeah, but yeah. As creators, do you guys find start. it? Yeah, fresh, <laughs> so, quick start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like a nine month. <laughs> yeah. Nine month product. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Have you guys ever considered going into visual effects or going into film at all? thought about it i yeah. did a bit of like a uh, 3d printing stuff 
Oh, uh, interesting. I worked uh, I worked for a company that did a lot of stuff for like Louis Vuitton. Yeah. And like their shop window displays. Yeah. So that was kind of cool because it's like a lot of the stuff that I did, it was like prototyping and like we would like mill stuff out. So like we've made like these massive ribbons that would go for like one end of the room to the other. And that would oh, be wow. in like all the Louis Vuitton shops. Wow. So it was pretty cool. Like some of the things that we had to do. So I... We basically made the molds and then it was like milled and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, so this it is sounds t- like this oh. is before you were signed. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. This is uh, before Lionhead as okay. well. So I see. So yeah, I'm just like you never know what you were gonna like get on your plate. So like I'd go into work and be like, hey, yeah, we we need a really big chocolate pudding <laughs> to, that somebody needs to jump into. So it's like okay, cool. I well, like sculpted up a giant chocolate pudding and <laughs> that's amazing. Then like that day send it off to the millers and like we'd come back in like a couple of days and like you'd get this like big chocolate pudding and then we'd there and like paint it up like hand traditionally and stuff wow so the practical side of that is is interesting do you guys yeah. i mean it always seems like when i talk to zebra shard it's everybody kind of has like when you go home when you, if you if you have time since you guys have kids when you go home. yeah when, <laughs> or if you if you go home if you ever go home if you get that time besides sculpt up stuff like what do you guys like to work on do you guys still work on character work or do you guys still you yeah, bet. But, well, you know, I'm doing the the ZBrush live when I when I can. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, definitely. I think I don't know. I mean, like everybody got like a different perspective on it. But yeah. for me, I get the feeling that you know, at work, you know, you're basically paid to produce out yeah. art. But sometimes I don't feel like you're always leveraging everything that you got to offer. Or yeah. sometimes you like to go in direction that might be interfering with where the project want to go. And even like sometimes you build up like frustrations, like, you know, you don't like the way it's going or the decision, but you know, you're getting paid to do it. So yeah. you do it. So I think like having something at home that release from you, yeah. you know, basically, you know, okay, you know, today was not a good day, but I know that when I'm coming home, I'm going to be working on something that really, right. you know, I'm having a lot of fun. So yeah, yeah, I think sure. that's a good release and even like a LT thing to do. So mm-hmm. because of that, it, cre- it it keeps your creative juice like alive. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, definitely. Like um, for me, like I'm always working on something that, you know, yeah. pushes me even further. So yeah. 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 I think that's as artists, like artists really need that, that fulfilling kind of feeling. And if you might not always get it in your career, you know, yeah. in production, no matter what, that's going to happen for everybody. Yeah. But it's kind of keeping things on the side, having projects on the side. Like, I've got a hard drive full of just stuff that's like, I'm always kind of working on. Like, things like, you know, I forget about this, I go back and, you know, add some stuff to this. It's like, it's never ending, right? Yeah. That's yeah. the best thing about having ZBrush as a tool. Yeah, just to jump into it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Like, for me, like, I, I do, like, I, if I've got, had like a really bad day at work, or not really bad day, but if I've like, had to look at Excel sheets all day or something like that. And it's <laughs> just like, the oh, most just, fun thing to do. Yeah. And I come home and like, I say to my wife, oh, I just really need to sculpt something like to, just to keep my right. creative juices flowing. And stuff. Right. But yeah, so she's pretty cool. She lets me sculpt. She understands that I need to. That's awesome. So, do you guys just uh, like watch TV and you sculpt kind of thing? Or like, uh, she's like, no, she's normally in another room and I yeah. am, but I, uh, I teach as well. So okay. like in the evening. So yeah, that's yeah, great. So, like she, uh, like she, hears me in the other room, and I'm, I'm Running not exactly class. like Paul, but I'm like when I teach, I'm like quite eccentric to keep people interested. <laughs> I could see that. I could see like that. that. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, no, it's, it's cool. No. Where are you teaching? You're teaching online. Uh, yeah, I teach with. I've teach at a few places. So okay. Taught so at the um, Games Art Institute mm-hmm. and with Think Tank, but oh, at, yeah, the moment, Think Tank. at the moment I'm doing uh, XMD Academy. Oh, great! So I've, I've created a course over there. So that's fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, that's really essential because people that work in the industry, it's there's only so many places you can get that kind of information. Yeah. You know, and it's like you can go to a university, but there's only so many schools. No one's like one of them, and yeah. it's one of the best places to go. But it's here and not everybody can make it out here yeah, you know definitely. it's like online is and doing what you do going on zebras live is like you seem to get a lot of positive reaction from people just sharing stuff as much as possible yeah, yeah. and yeah. i think seriously i think like i grow through this as well because you know oftentimes and, and i think it's the same thing when you got like students and you're teaching sometimes you'll get like questions or like stuff that you know how do i do that and it's like the kind of question that you would never ask like the way that you did your thing you never you never went through that route mm-hmm. but the fact that they ask you for it you're just yeah. like mm, that's oh, a good question I- and yeah. then 
and then you might find like another tool that you would have never thought of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, I think I think yeah, I think you grow through that. Yeah, yeah that, that is a part of the learning <laughs> process, right? I feel a bit bad sometimes because sometimes my students like ask me, oh yeah, how would I? It's like for example, on the I'm doing a hair course, and they would like, oh, how would you do dreads? And I was like, oh. My God. <laughs> I've done it. I've done oh it no! It's like okay, let's let's come on. Let's, let's figure this out together, let's, guys. Let's give it a go. I'm yeah. learning with you guys. Yeah. Come on, let's try. Yeah. I find so. myself doing anytime I don't stream as much as you guys, but I, I, like I find myself like, I do a jump on ZBrush Live, and I'll I just kind of go through and I start something, and I get to a point where I'm like, I've never actually done this before, and you kind of just go through it, and like I'm just gonna try this out, and if it doesn't work, it's kind of okay, because you just go, oh, I probably won't do that again, it's, but. You know? and, and even sometimes, like I remember, like some cases, I was just like, I oh, know, guys, I I don't know, like I, you know, I went to this thing, I, I'm trying to do that, yeah. but I, you know, it doesn't work, it doesn't work out at all. And then someone in the chat would say, eh, but no, go there and try this, and yeah. then I try it out, and yeah. then it works. I'm just like, oh man, <laughs> where, where were you? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's so, great that you're open to that, though. Yeah, like, no. that's a great quality. No, to so have I think it's, it's yeah, like, it's like a like a kind of a give and take. So you're kind of on a journey together. You know, yeah. it's like yeah. we're, you know, it's great to have people there in the chat and like talking to you and like yeah. you know, okay. kind of just watching. But, it's like mm, maybe you should try that. Yeah, but, okay. But seriously, I felt like the old you know ZBrush Live experience. It's really more like a, imagine like the three of us. We're all all in the same room yeah. all sculpting yeah. at the same time and then we're just like chatting you know yeah. exactly. and we're just yeah. like oh it's man awesome. I, i'm Definitely. stuck i'm stuck so like you just like come in and you say i don't do that this <clears throat> yeah. You know, yeah that's 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 how i perceive it like mm -hmm. that's how i would so it doesn't really matter the skill level we're all yeah. just doing our thing and just like chilling yeah. together right. so that's awesome no it's a great way to look at it i feel like is that do you find that to be somewhat like what it's like in the studio like when you're working with a group of artists where you can actually yeah. go to somebody's desk and go you know, like, hey, I got this problem I'm trying to figure out. Or yeah. they might just be there and you're talking about it. Yeah, yeah no, definitely. It's like, I, th I think it's got something. Yeah, it's, it's like you're you're there together as a team and you yeah. everybody wants to, like, be the best that they can. And, yeah. like, sharing that knowledge and helping that el helping each other out is what makes a really good team. Yeah. And it's like, like, even, like, when people find stuff, it's like, oh, man, I didn't know this. And it's like, hey, guys, have you seen this? Like, it's this tool or whatever. And it's yeah. like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. And, it's, and that's yeah. one of the things that we struggle with is, you know, we're always trying. We, we do so much on the streaming side, actually ZBrush videos, the classroom, all of the stuff that we're putting out. But even then, it's like to get people to see all of the things that you can do. ZBrush Live has been one of the greatest things. If people find the time to actually sit and watch streams yeah. and watch a, a lot of people, you get all kinds of stuff from different people. Like watching individuals, like you're going to do it one way, you're going to do it one way, somebody else is going to do it totally differently. Yeah. And you can sort of like cherry pick things out of there and just like put that in your little library of stuff. Yeah. You know, and it's like the more stuff you have, the better it is when you get to a problem. It's like I could do dreads. 10 different ways. I yeah. guess I'll try this one and if it doesn't work the next time I'll try another one then eventually you got to get a little yeah. you know, it's, like an, it's like an evolution. It's like an evolution of yourself. As yeah. Well. yeah. And it's, it's really weird. Like my, my wife gave me, it's like putting yourself like out your comfort zone a mm. little bit to like develop That's a good yourself. point. Yeah. And it's funny, my wife gave me a, a little card like it's like one of the things that she gave me, and uh, it was along with the screaming goat. Along with the screaming goat, <laughs> just next to yeah. it. You know? But it said, uh, it said on this card, "Magic happens when you're out your comfort zone," and I think it's, I think That's it's awesome. true. When like, I mean, like here, like we're completely out of our comfort zone here. We're like, we're hermits. We like sit in, like yeah. sculpt, and yeah, magic does happen when you're out there. Like it definitely it does. Just, like the people that you meet and stuff. If you don't give it a go and if you're not out your comfort zone, right? you never know. For sure. And Especially coming to a place like this where you're around people that are like-minded enough, yeah. you know, and you're getting exposed to people. Even though it might be, you know, challenging to, like, go talk to somebody you haven't seen but haven't talked to before or somebody that you know, you don't know how to approach them. It's like everybody seems to have that trouble. But once you sort of get those conversations going, especially yeah. tonight, there'll be keg and yeah. food yeah it's like that yeah. kind of like it, it, yeah, everything loosens yeah. up and it's yeah. like oh man this is like the best and people just love it yeah and we've had a lot of repeat artists just coming back every year for that reason I yeah think. yeah but it's, it's an addiction yeah like, I'm, uh, I'm addicted to this that's place. awesome man. i love that cool. but to be honest with you like my feeling because it's my first summit and uh I feel like up until that, you know, now, basically, you know, because I get the feeling everybody comes here, like from different parts of the world. 
and you know, they come alone to your air, to rent like an Airbnb or a hotel, and then yeah. they come here. But you know, they come here clearly like to meet people, like to be like a likes and, and talk about that. So every time that I was just because most of the time what just happened, I just I saw the, the face of someone that I know online, yeah. but yeah. I never talked yeah. to, and I just like just like jumped in, line right jumped to him. In, yeah. yeah, directly. <laughs> hey, and I was just like shaking his hand, in, and of course, like everybody's like super receptive <clears throat> because yeah. you came for this. But then you know, I know that there's like the shyness factor. Sure. But I was just like, man, I'm only near here for three days. Oh yeah, man. I want, I want to shake every hand <laughs> I, I, I can, man. That. This, yeah. this is the thing, like, um, like, like Rosetti's amazing, but I'm so scared to go up to, and talk to him. Yeah. And literally, as we like walked He's in, just he's standing there. there. I was like, man, hey, hello, hello. Oh man, like, it, it's like it, it you, me you up just so, put, yeah. get put in these situations. Yeah, that's and it's it. Just like, oh man, hey, hey. Yeah. That is the best yeah. part. It's, I wish we could do this more often, and I wish we could make this bigger. You know, it's, it's it, I mean, we're getting better and better at it every year. And like the setup, this is your first year, but the, the setup outside is getting, we're getting more like energy and more action and more sponsors, more booths, you know? I, I think one thing that would really help out actually, it's uh, because that's one of the thing that I find like that was like harder was, uh, you know, we know a lot of each other's work, mm -hmm. but we don't always know each other's uh, names or face. Name. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so the thing is you talk with someone, it, Completely mm -hmm. clueless who he is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it happened like with uh, George, uh, and uh, I forgot his last name, but basically this guy is like the clay what? sculptor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 he's yeah, been yeah, with yeah. Brett Riley, and yeah, yeah I met exactly, George. I met exactly. George for the first time this week. Okay, and, uh, you know he's awesome. But yeah, for, incredible. But for me, like I've been using his stuff as reference for the longest time. For me, like one of the benchmark where I want to get at. You know, yeah. like. And basically, I was talking, You're talking with him. You're talking to this guy. <laughs> yeah, but, know. but no, not at all. Yeah. And then he was just like, "Oh, here's my card." And no, yeah. you know, it was like, and then I look at the card, and it's like, "Man, this rings a bell." And yeah. then it just clicked, you know. Wow. And I was just like, Seb starts screaming. It's like, you know, it's like, <laughs> like the goat, right, right. like the like goat, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so yeah, no, I, I think it's amazing. Well, what do you think we could do better? Because I mean, we we try, we give you guys well, these. This is the thing, like for us, like it's pretty cool to have these, but it's too low. Yeah, it's too low. It's too low, and it needs just like. We just wear but like a man, face just, mask. Just a sticker with people's names on. You yeah. know what? Brett Briley's been yelling at me about that for two <laughs> years now. Yeah. I know. It's, He's like, just get hello, my name is, and just put yeah. it right there. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe like even like a small picture when, when you you know when well, you, when you, you do the registry. Yeah. It's your face. I would love like to have a picture of your work. Let's just yeah. say you got like four full piece. You just put it like next to your yeah. name yeah. on it. That's when, when you thing register. That Brett Briley's a wise guy. He's been saying that a lot. He comes in with his shirt with his artwork on it, and he's got his his user like handle like which is um uh sparks yeah and like so like you know each other by each other's like zbc handle or art yeah, station yeah, yeah. whatever and uh yeah and like maybe just like a bigger spot for the name yeah, yeah no. all right we'll take that to heart yeah, yeah. because yeah. uh yeah because that's the thing there's so many amazing people you don't want to miss out yeah. right anyone right but that's the thing sometimes you just you just I, don't know, you know? I'm, yeah. I'm rubbish with names as well yeah. i'm compete completely useless with names. Well, and it's tough yeah. here because you're going from so many people yeah. at once and like I have a hard time myself. It's like I've yeah. met people multiple times here and I just will forget. Yeah. And it's yeah. like when I sit and have like intimate conversations like this, I will absolutely remember. But it's like if it's just like in passing, it's like, uh, you know, you're doing a thousand things at once and your brain's just going, yeah. and you just can't. Yeah, and, uh, and you're not here really as an attendee. You're yeah. like part of the, the yeah, you know, organizer. Too. So yeah. I mean, yeah. like, that's a different yeah. kind of perspective. But still, so. I, I feel awful because, like, it's I have the same thing where it's like I recognize people's work and I see people throughout the year. It's like I want to make sure I talk to all these people. Yeah. And it just never happens the way it is because you're just, like, so, like, high strung about it the yeah. whole way through, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. But I would love to just come hang out. I mean, tonight is the perfect night for it. We get to yeah. actually go out and just chill and have some food. And we got the awards tonight, which honestly, that's uh, it, this is your first time for the awards. Yeah. So you're going to love it, man. It's going to yeah. be great. And, and we're quite proud because even our game is like part of the awards yeah. too. So absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, which yeah. is also, so, I mean, yeah. honestly, I'm, I, I'll, I can, uh, I'll best of luck to both of you guys for both things. Yeah, thank Cheers. you. Yeah. Well, thank you. And yeah. the rest of the team, of course. So. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, we thank yeah, you yeah. guys. Like, yeah. they, I know that they wish that they could be here as well, like to yeah. represent. The, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, well, with the, cool. like I said, the game is uh, fantastic, and uh, our hats off to all you guys for your hard work, and there's plenty of people out there still playing that game, so yeah. Yeah, I'm no, just getting cool. started. Like, yeah. This is the one thing I love about games today is even if it doesn't, there used to be is like if you miss the boat on, especially a game like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, is like I don't feel like I was pressured to jump into that game right when it came out because it's story-driven. It's like I can kind of play it at my own pace and like, you know kind of jump in and like i don't feel like i'm missing out but if it's like 
Fortnite or something else, like that's like so competitive. You miss something, yeah. it's like, uh, and like I, I, I almost don't, don't want it. Enough to play yeah, it's like, like I'm yeah. just so behind, I'll never <laughs> want to play it. Yeah, you know. But nowadays, it's like I like the story-driven games that have yeah. you know substance to it. And, and 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 I like people like you because the thing is, after the game, I was like working on the post-launch content, yeah. which yeah. were like outfit and stuff like that. And every month they release it, but winters like people like you that come in at the end, mm-hmm. you you get access to all. Yeah. It's like I get all, all the content like, and like oh, right like, away. I so. didn't have to wait for it. No, yeah. exactly. I know it's all yeah for sure I did that with Destiny 2 and I d- I've done that with a lot of games honestly it's mostly just because of time it's like I teach as well and Pixelogic is a full time thing yeah. and you know we're spending our time doing so much stuff yeah yeah. but it's like every once in a while I squeeze in time like I'm gonna do that for sure and even just like for a couple hours like yeah, jump yeah. in there and have fun and it's great yeah. like I love that you guys don't you guys game at all yeah, I, I try to try with it. the yeah. busy schedule and well, the kids, but yeah. yeah. When we're not sculpting. Yeah. So yeah. 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 <laughs> I know. Here and That's there, the, I treat myself. It know? is the hardest thing is when you, I mean, when you work on the art, it's, I feel like it's, you get almost the same satisfaction of working on the art as doing it, you know, as playing the thing. I, I, I can see that sort of connection and I get that satisfaction when I'm just working in ZBrush and yeah. I can sit there for eight hours just like I can sit there with a controller in my hand and, you know, do that too. But yeah. Yeah. it's like, it's almost the same thing in a way. It's almost, I think it's almost more creative to be actually building the thing and sort of like using your brain to concept that stuff out. Mm. But I guess it's like every once in a while I just need a break. You know, yeah. it's like not yeah. doing the same thing for too long. Switch your brain off. Just and yeah. different world, yeah. different place. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. I won't lie, but, you know, like I've been playing games for, you know, since like I was like, so you know so young and i get like over the years like sometimes like there's some games that i feel like it's like not redundant but like been there done that like you know first person shooter i love them but at some point i'm just like you know i don't know like i, I play it but i only like to finish the old game just like having like, a glimpse of the experience and stuff yeah. like that yeah. i'm a huge moral combat fan and oh yeah, nice. yeah. and uh, <laughs> I, yeah, no, well, you like I, martial arts, and I, okay, I get. Yeah, it. well, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I guess I guess it got all, a link in there, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, no. But that's the thing, and at the same time, I think it's relevant for us because just like you know VFX in the movies, you need like to check out like what the others are making because you know they're pushing the benchmark as well, and yeah. and I think it's it's good to see you know being expired, but at the same time knowing where the benchmark is. You know, like I saw like recently what, you know, Last of Us 2 is actually yeah. looking yeah. like. So yeah. I don't want to be like the one sticking my head like in the sand, just ignoring. No, no, it doesn't yeah. exist. It doesn't exist. It's, it's perfectly all right what we're making. Yeah. No, no, I want to I wanna roll if you I can with those guys. So, so, yeah, no. That's, that's really great. I think that's a, that's, I respect that because that's, that's kind of what it pushes everything in yeah. the world, yeah. right? That's yeah, yeah. how you get better. You yeah. know, it's yeah, like yeah, you, don't be afraid of it. It's like challenge yourself to, you know, we yeah. can do that too. Yeah. Well, if the yeah. studio made it, it's it's feasible. Yes. yes. So, this, this <laughs> exactly. So it might be hard work, but it's feasible. Yeah. So yeah. It's yeah. just learning that learning that uh, chemistry to get it get it working in your game, basically. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, uh, we got to get set up for this award show coming up here pretty soon. But cool. you guys have been yeah. awesome. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, both been, you guys. yeah, yeah same. Really same, yeah. same yeah. Here, man. All right. Well, best of luck to both of you guys yeah. tonight. Thank you. Yeah. And cool. uh, we should head out. Cool. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thanks. Private sessions with students that come here. Is it available for people to sign up afterwards, or is it something that you're doing just live right now? So, okay. So how? I don't know how much you want. <laughs> I can I can pitch it or whatever. Pitch but, it. Pitch um, it for so anybody who's not of everybody's not aware. People that watch this later, I want people to know. Okay. Um, so uh, basically, it's a lifetime access workshop. It's I wanted to make it kind of based off how Pixelogic has ran their business, where mm-hmm. you buy it once, all updates are free. I've you know, I've had a copy of ZBrush since version, what, two or something yeah. like that, and yeah. I have not had to pay for an update yet, mm-hmm. fingers crossed, right? So, yeah. <laughs> um, and and I, as a consumer, hello, I love it. Thank yeah. you, Pixelogic, yeah. right? So I want that same feeling for my students, you know? It's like you buy it once, lifetime access, and you get access to all the stuff I've made for the first two years, mm-hmm. and it's I've had it out for two and a half years now of a whole ton of content two more years of content yeah. and I just do this full time now so 
Um, I also do uh, live Q and A sessions every Friday, and that my students can come by and ask. So that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. You're up. Welcome back to the ZBrush Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning into ZBrushLive.com and the ZBrush Podcast wherever you're listening. We want to take just a quick moment to talk about ZBrush subscription pricing. And if you follow the link that we have provided in the description, you'll see that we do have a one-month price for ZBrush, which is $39.95 a month, or the six-month pricing, which is $179.95 a month, or the perpetual license, which is $8.95 that currently is a one-time cost that never expires. So we assume most of you that listen to the podcast already own ZBrush, but if you have friends or people that are interested in getting into digital sculpting or ZBrush, all of this information can be found by following this link. And for all of you ZBrush podcast listeners, we would greatly appreciate any reviews, comments, or feedback wherever you're watching these episodes or checking out our shows. Also, of course, likes and subscriptions would be greatly appreciated, and we already appreciate all of you that have already done so. If you have been tuning into our content on ZBrushLive.com, we have a very special, unique tool for you using Discord. So in the description of this episode, you'll see a sign-up link, which you can sign up, and you can join the conversation with all the ZBrushers out there that are using Discord. And it's a great way to just communicate and connect with other artists and creative people like yourselves. So we thank all of you ZBrushers out there for your continued support. That covers all of our news updates. This episode is with our guest, Shane Olson. He is a regular ZBrush live streamer. He's become a very well-known instructor and educator on his website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. He's an incredibly talented artist. He's known uh, most famously if you check out his site for his work on Overwatch and Disney Infinity. And there's so many great ZBrushers out there learning incredible skills through his trainings and through his education. So this episode we loved. We finally had a chance to sit down with Shane, who we get to see all the time on ZBrushLive.com. But being able to talk with him and learn more about his history is truly inspiring. And there's so much knowledge to be gained from Shane. You absolutely do not want to miss this episode. So without any further delay, we give you Shane Olson. Well, thanks for coming. Man. Yeah, this yeah. Is, honestly, this is a, a true pleasure. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. You've Same. been on our ZBrush Live community and uh, I had to tell you, you're of all of the streamers, you've got, I, from what I watch, is one of the greatest interactions with the community and the people. It seems like you have oh, a great thanks. following. It's a lot of fun. We're yeah. having a ton of fun with it. Yeah. 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 I think I'm on my 97th episode. You've been cruising through. Almost to 100 episodes. That's amazing. Guys. Yeah. You're all catching up to dress with the hashtag Ash <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. But <laughs> he moves pretty quick, but yeah, yeah. He, I think at the pace that you're going, you might catch up to him. Yeah. I've slowed down a little bit. I've been doing every other Monday instead of every Monday just to kind of catch my breath on some other things. Yeah. But I think I'm going to pick it back up again and start yeah. this back up again. It's so you're at, as of right now, you're, I mean, I wanted to get into your work history because, I mean, you're a pretty famous guy in the ZBrush community and people know your work, but for those that don't, um, you, you're, let's guess we should talk a little bit about your work history. I know that you worked at Disney Infinity for a while. Uh-huh. Um, uh, is that, uh, how long has it been since you left Disney Infinity? Oh, jeez, I think it's been four years, I want to say. I, I'm, I'm horrible with timelines. I know, I know. Um, yeah, my, my art brain doesn't let me <laughs> it's, it's like time flies when you're like staring at a ZBrush screen and sculpting right. all day. <laughs> so um, I worked for Disney Interactive for 10 years, and uh, that was my sixth studio. Okay. So, yeah, I've been doing it for 22 years now. Wow. Like old guy. That's amazing, though. <laughs> the, the knowledge yeah. that you have in your brain, people would pay so much money for. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a fun ride. I've been animator at times, rigging at times, mm-hmm. but mostly my my general love is for character modeling. Yeah. And then when ZBrush came along, it's like, oh my goodness, game yeah. change. Yeah. 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 So you do have a very, I mean, your style sort of fits very well within the sort of animated character world. Mm-hmm. When you got started before that, is that something you've always done? or? Yeah, I've always kind of, um, I mean, I, I, I remember a time when I was sitting on my parents' in my parents' living room and this old animated short called Wally B. It's like mm. one of Pixar's very first shorts ever. I actually haven't seen and that one. Well, I'm it's, ashamed. It's, well, it's old, old. It's yep. like their first one and I saw it on like a newscast or something yep. and I'm just like, what is that? It looks so amazing because it was traditional 2D animation but it was 3D. You know, like the, the movement and everything was, was traditional. Right. But I'm just like, 
what is this? So that came up before. I forget what they called it. The the lamp. They I know they had. It the, was, it was the like first. Yeah, it was. So it was like that one came up very very first, mm-hmm. and then it was like the the unicycle and the snowman yeah. and all of those after that. Right. You know those little shorts until yeah. they started making full feature films. So, but when Toy Story one came out, that's when I was in school. Okay. So yeah, yeah. That was a big one for me too. The Toy Story. I mean, like. Every artist has sort of like it's always a movie mm-hmm. or some sort of animated thing that they were just so like encaptured by, right? And it just like some a spark went off, and then eventually this industry kind of became something that was feasible, right? It right. wasn't like some just like magical thing that was, you know, just in theaters and like right. it, it, it was possible, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's interesting always to hear everybody's like one thing that like was the spark, <laughs> right? That's right. great. So yeah, then from me. there, what did you do? Um. So well, if going back I was actually working in the sign industry because I was always told you're not going to make any money as an artist you know mm-hmm. it's just you know it's starving artists and you've everybody's heard oh, that yeah. my dad would say the same thing right yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 you're never going to make any money um, which yeah it's, it's kind of opposite <laughs> yeah if you play but your cards right yeah yeah, could, yeah. Um, so I was in the sign industry because it was as close as possible I could get to actually doing art but it was you know I, I would do airbrushing and yeah. stuff like that. And so like advertisements, things like that. Yeah, yeah, vinyl lettering. And um, I saw this ad for in the newspaper for a game tester. And I'm just like, what? You can test games? Because I've, I've always companies. been a gamer, you know. Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I'm just like, I'm going to go check this out. Maybe I can make some side money and play games and, you know. But I, w- I went down there, and um, it was this local, local company called Sculptured Software, and they do ports of Mortal Kombat to oh, awesome. consoles and things like that so and but it turned out you know game tester job is not all the glory that it sounds like it is it's really it's like unfortunate playing a broken game <laughs> for like pennies you know they don't pay very well at all and yeah. it's temporary and this was even the night shift and i'm just like oh, yeah, i'm like i'm not gonna do that but yeah on, on, on the same list i saw character artist is that is that a thing? Is that something you can do for a living? Yeah. Can I talk to one of them? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, you know. So they went and got a, one of the character artists and brought him out. And I'm just like, how do I do this? Yeah. You know, this is this is like some unreachable thing. What mm-hmm. what is this? And he's like, yeah. And he kind of explained a little bit of what he did. And I'm like, well, how do I learn it? And he gave me the typical, we'll go to school for it. And this was like and 1990. Six. Uh-huh. What schools there was n- were yeah, none. had programs? Zero for schools. Yeah. And uh, it just so happened that I got the opportunity to, to move up to Seattle for a while. And um, so there was nothing. I'm from Utah. There's nothing in Utah yeah. at the time. It was like yeah. just trade schools and things. And um, I saw that the Art Institute of Seattle was offering up a comp- computer animation program. I'm just like, really? Mm. They, they're doing so. I got in there and I was like the second class through that program. Oh wow, really so it was very new. Super guinea pig. Yeah. And so that's when Toy Story One just came out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was pretty uh, pretty excited about that. And then I went through that whole program. And then when I was done, I got my first job back in Utah at a place called uh, Sapphire. Okay. And Sapphire. My first game I ever made was Xena Warrior Fighting Princess. Oh, I so watched that (laughs) show. (laughs) Oh, man, I watched Hercules and Xena Warrior Princess. Oh, my gosh. Wow, they made a game for that. Nintendo 64. What? How did I miss that? It was... Wasn't that great? (laughs) You know, you know. But (laughs) it was during a time when um, everybody on the team wore all the hats. So everybody was assigned a character. And what that meant was... You modeled the character, you textured the character, you rigged the character, you animated the character, you built the arena that they fight in, oh and gosh. you design all their moves, and the whole thing. We even motion captured some of the characters back then, too. Wow. And yeah, and so... Was this a full was, 3D, or was this side-scroller? Yeah, no, full okay. 3D, full wow. 3D. Yeah, I mean, you you look at it now, yeah. and you're just like, oh, I can see how it's he like, did that. They're like, the <laughs> character cap was probably like a thousand tries. Like Yeah, it was... I used a program called Nendo, to model it, which yeah. is a, it's like, you know how Sculptress is to ZBrush mm-hmm. as Nendo is to Mirai. Mirai, uh, okay. Yeah, Mirai okay. was the big one, um, and uh, yeah, we modeled in that, and um, so, and then the next one I worked on like Rogue Spear, that was another port, and then uh, that studio kind of ran into financial troubles a little bit, and so I had to move to a new studio, 
and I actually moved to, I went to a studio called Acclaim. You guys know yeah. what yeah, Acclaim yeah. is. Oh, so yeah. sculptured software that I talked to the um, character artist from uh, had, had gotten purchased by Acclaim. Okay. And so I ended up working at that place wow. as a char- as a as an animator and a character artist. But it's like, hey, I made it, guys. Yeah, you know, right. it's weird. It was weird. How did thing. that feel? Was that it like was it was uh, uh, it was interesting because now the building was older. They did they didn't change anything about it. It yeah. was still like the same that it always yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was cool. You know, it's like, hey, I I did what I said I was going to do. I feel like you thing. like you made it. Like that's the thing. Right. But then once you, <laughs> I feel like for everybody, everybody has that moment, and then you get there and you go. Wait a minute. Yeah, it wasn't as cool as I thought it was yeah. going to be. I was working on HBO Boxing, which okay. never came out. Okay. Um, but uh, I was responsible for, for um, finding the likeness of all these boxers' faces, you know, and all their their, their, their looks, their body, yeah. and all that. And that was a lot of fun. I got to go out to Vegas and watch some boxing fights. Which you're actually capturing like image reference. <laughs> yeah, gorgeous. yes. That's pretty interesting because yeah. that's pre, that's really pre, like, Google search. Like oh, you're yeah. not going to be able to use like internet's pretty young at that age, right? right so right. you're not going to be able to digitally like reference all those things, right? <laughs> right. That's so interesting in itself to think like how much we use tools now, oh and what you'd have to do then to capture reference, right? And this Whoa. was this was around when um, I think I think ZBrush was just an idea mm-hmm. at the time, probably yeah, around 99. that time. Yeah, and then um, yeah, so that would have been ninety nine because yeah. I started in ninety. 97 okay and i worked for sapphire for a couple years went to acclaim and then they shut that studio down uh acclaim did Mm -hmm. and then i went to a studio called glyphix and i worked on advent rising which was an xbox title yeah i remember yeah yeah i totally remember (laughs) really i was not a big i was like at the time i was anti-xbox for some Uh reason i was all about playstation Mm -hmm. but i remember those titles coming out and like Halo was the one that jumped me over to Xbox eventually. Oh, yeah. 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 So, Advent Rising was, um, if you've ever played Mass Effect, it was kind of the the predecessor to Mass Effect in a way. You know, it was just kind of a similar story. Um, And uh, the Glyphics eventually, most of them ended up at Chair, which is now owned by Epic. Mm. That's where my buddy Matt Thorup is and a whole bunch of the guys that I worked with at Glyphics. And uh, so... um, yeah, I just I, w- I worked there long enough to finish Advent Rising, and I was a motion capture animator there, and so uh, me and a couple guys built the motion capture system there. And wow, so that's impressive. It's I'm 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 like half the characters in there, like doing all the motion <laughs> and stuff like that. You that's know, a pretty awesome yeah, credit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, um, lost a lot of weight, gained it all back. I bet. <laughs> Hell yeah. So like, yeah. it'd be nice to have that as like a full time job, like because we just sit right. at our tables and like I know. sculpt. Like, you don't burn calories doing this, unfortunately. (laughs) It just doesn't work. It was fun because we would come up with some really interesting ideas as far as, like, how to capture the motion because it was, like, a space game. Yeah. And we were, like, there was a a hovering vehicle, and um, we... And it was like you know cruising down across the the terrain, and it was kind of rocking back and forth. So what we did is um, we made like a teeter totter um, out of a, a plank, and then oh, wow. so put something like underneath it, it up. and then no, then the, both of us. There was two of us, uh-huh. and we were like on either side of the ship on the wings, and so we were like, and yeah, they were totally rocking us back <laughs> and amazing. forth. And that's a that's good how way we to got do the it. Motion. And uh, yeah, we, th- there was one that were, there was an elevator. And we had to come down and come off the elevator. Yeah. So we were just like riding it, and there's like three, two, one. <laughs> and then we walked. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it was that fun. is so and it amazing. totally worked. It That's totally amazing. worked. Yeah. So after that, um, I got a job at Incognito, which is uh, w- at the time they were owned by Sony. They were they're known for Twisted Metal Black. Oh Sweet. yeah, yeah. That's a uh, that's a gold star. Yeah, it's a classic. Yeah, I, I I I worked on a tiny tiny bit. I can't. I, I'm not yeah. accredited in any of it yeah. at the time. I worked on Warhawk. Oh yeah. So Warhawk. Um, I was I was a animator slash rigger at at uh, Incognito. So I animated a bunch of the soldiers and their in-game animations and a bunch of cinematics that never happened because they made it into an online game because yeah. they ran out of time, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, I, I rigged the vehicles in that game. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. The Warhawk itself and that's stuff like that. And that's about the time when ZBrush 2 
was out, version right. two. So right, when you're starting just to get into like Z spheres and actual like the real sculpting stuff is coming. Yes, yeah. that's when um, I just remember like like the companies like Weta and stuff picking mm -hmm. it up and yep. that it's, was it's starting to get. That was a big part of where I mean, part of our Oscar, uh, Oprah won an Oscar years ago, mm -hmm. and that was a big contributor. Was when that was a big stepping stone. Was when Weta adopted. Mm -hmm. as a digital sculpting tool mm -hmm. and that exposed it to everyone and then right. it was able to become what it was and used now where you have studios every studio is using it right right, right. so that was and that was when the um the map maker mm -hmm. first came out oh like, yeah oh I yeah i think that was it might have been was that two or three where, that it was, was almost three. like a separate program yeah z mapper you're talking Z-Map. yeah i think well, it was three. like you would export the maps yes of, yeah yeah it was like finally came to a level where because it was cool because you could sculpt in there, but how do I get this out? Right. You know, and right. that was the thing that allowed you to get it out. Right. Um, so uh, after that is when, let's see. So every single time a studio would either, I would either get laid off or it would shut down. I would try to get on an avalanche. An avalanche, it's not the avalanche in, where is it Sweden? There's like yeah. two avalanche studios. Sweden one. and I forget what yeah. the other one is. And so, yeah, yeah, the avalanche studio I worked at was in, in Utah, Salt Lake City. So um, I would try to get on every single time and they just didn't have a seat for me or my skills weren't high enough or, you know, whatever. Yeah. The, and then finally the planets aligned after uh, Incognito mm -hmm. and I was able to get on their, uh, they made a sister studio called Falline. Okay. And it was meant to just create Nintendo properties. It's when the Wii was the big thing. Oh, that was a all huge the, time. All the rage. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I was so, working at Best Buy those days. Oh, really? <laughs> I remember selling Wii's. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that's awesome. <laughs> so so I worked on Ultimate Band. It's like this uh, <laughs> It's like this rock band game. That, what that were you did, modeling? The characters. Okay. And so I was doing the characters and the motion capture for the cinematics. Wow. Again, it's funny because we actually purchased... Well, I shouldn't say... I, <laughs> anyway, yeah. same motion capture s system was okay. used for that. Um but uh, and uh, yeah, we were modeling, helping model some of the characters. But I was most, mostly doing the animation, the motion capture, and then um, and then I worked on the the studios merged back together, and that's when Disney purchased Avalanche. Okay, and that's kind of how that's the same that's how timeline. How you made your way to Disney and Interactive? Right. Okay, right. I see. And so I worked on uh, like Cars and Toy Story, the games. Yeah. And um, it was right after they had done Meet the Robinsons. Oh, yeah. They were just ending that game, mm -hmm. and I got on right after that on a game that was called Jabberwocky. Oh, Jabberwocky. Jabberwocky. That, that is so, a... Yeah, okay. Jabberwocky. Yeah, it's off, off the book, uh, or the poem, I think. Mm. Um, I think that's what I'm thinking of. So Jabberwocky, the only... It, it got canceled by Disney because they didn't know what to do with it, but it was amazing. And where you can see that is um, Blur Studios did a cinematic for us. Oh, okay. Using the character designs and, the, and they built new, ca you know, higher resolution sure. characters and everything like that. Yeah. If you want, you can. Yeah, pull that you up. Can pull, yeah, do I'm a actually kind of curious about that. Do a search that. for Jabberwocky Blur Studios, and we, we can just watch a little sliver of it. Yeah, no, it's, absolutely. It's a, I'm it's a full very interested. But this is this this is Blur Studios. I mean, this is probably one of their earlier cinematics. Uh, I mean, yeah. I know they've been around for such a long time, but yeah. Yeah. So I was um, I was character lead on this game while it was still around. But this was my first big character gig. Yeah. So. In terms of the like the resolution compared to what you'd been working on, was no. this kind of a higher? Well, this is the cinematic. This is, this is their higher so, version, but like the game itself that you worked on. Right. Was it like similar to what you had been working with before? It was, yeah, well, so yeah, this, I, I had modeled a character um, that the head concept artist at the time, his name was Todd Harris. Mm -hmm. I asked him if he had any concepts that hadn't been modeled yet because I really wanted to get on Avalanche. He's like, yeah, I got this one. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I I modeled it up and I, I finally got the attention of the art director there. Okay. And that's kind of how I how I made my way on to being the, the character. Yeah, I can definitely see, I mean, it, you look at some of the Blur stuff now, this looks like early Blur stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, for sure. And it still looks it good though. It's such a fantastic job. And it this was this good. was before How to Train Your Dragon. Okay. So um, it oh, was interesting. The, the premise was sort of similar, but with monsters instead of dragons. Yeah. Where this kid befriended um, this monster, not this one, but the, the other guy. He almost resembles Hiccup in a way. A little, yeah, a little bit. Like little I see bit. with some of like the design choices, you can see maybe some just inspiration maybe coming right. from that. Right. I yeah. don't know if they, you know, who knows. 
was. I'm sure. I mean, with that, nowadays with art, you it's there's <laughs> always some infusion of so many things. There you go. Yeah, those guys. So, um, yeah, do you even know these guys? <laughs> <laughs> so you just ca- these are catching on these guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're going to save them all. <laughs> do you even know them? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so then I got hired on it uh, at at Disney Interactive, and as that, and then they canceled that game. And then the next thing I worked on was Toy Story 3, which a lot of people really, really liked. Yeah. And um, we were starting to do a, uh, it, was, it was kind of an experiment, really, in a way. Um, because Disney games, they were just known as, um, they just take the, the, the film and basically redo the film and they want you to play through the film, yeah. right? Yeah. And for some people it's like, okay, extension of the film, but mm-hmm. other people are like, why don't we take this world and expand it and have fun with that it? That was my feeling always right? with games always. that were transitioned from movies. Especially like the toy, first Toy Story game I remember playing on Super Nintendo. And yeah. it was exactly the same thing. It was a side scroller and it was just going through the motions of all the scenes and like, I could see that sort of like thought process in the early stages, but now those games never seem to work. Like if you do the reverse movie from a game, it right. has trouble. It has trouble as well. Right, right. right. There's yes. like a weird thing with the mixture of the two. Yeah, exactly. It's this weird medium yeah. transitional thing. But, yeah. Um, so uh, the designers wanted to explore a little bit, and they're like, you know, they went to the Disney, the Disney heads, and they're just like, could this be a play box or a, a toy box, like this this play world? We almost called it like uh, Grand Theft Auto for kids because, <laughs> and it's not, and not to say it's no, like, of like without the adult stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But the freedom, if you, of freedom, yeah. If you know how Grand Theft Auto works, it's essentially just a, a cluster of missions that you can do, and you can do them whenever you want. And there's there is kind of a timeline that you follow. You know, this this mission opens up when you complete this one, that kind yeah. of thing. Um, and and Disney really liked the idea, but they were afraid to go away from the movie, the the movie model. Right, to disconnect it from the story. So instead, they said, "Let's do both." Okay. And put them both into the same game. Yeah. So we were essentially this crew that was doing two games in one. Oh, we wow. had one crew doing the cinematic style game, and another crew doing the the, the toy box style game, the, the GTA Lite kind mm. of thing. Were you guys collaborating um, it all together? Oh yeah, kind of same okay. same assets and yeah. stuff. But, yeah. But still, it was like. A lot of work. A lot I can of, imagine you know, overtime and stuff, but oh, yeah. it was it was one of the funnest times I've ever had developing games because um, I was over. Uh, <clears throat> there was these little things that you could do, uh, like it was it was like a a photo mode. You can go get a camera and you get. There was these little kind of villagers. They look like Fisher Price people in the yeah. world. And you, if you went and got them and dressed them a certain way and put them in a certain spot, it would play. It would reward you with a little thing. Yeah. And so there was like a list of those that you could go and do. It's like, okay, go collect these guys and put them over here, and you'll get rewarded. And you can check it off. And mm-hmm. it's just one of those those things. You know? Sure. And That's uh, probably a very early adaptation of that. Like that tool set exists in a lot of games now. Yeah. But that yeah. was probably maybe that's why you loved it because you had. You guys were trying something out that was kind of new. Right, right. And it was, what was cool is, um, so I was responsible for gathering those assets together, setting up that cinematic camera inside the game world, and then spreading it back out after the thing was done behind the scenes. Yeah. And it was it was crazy buggy because I would have to load them in to memory mm-hmm. behind the scenes and then make sure they were where they needed to be, okay. run the thing, run the sound, cue everything, mm-hmm. and even some special effects, That's you know, really and then, complex and then system. let it go. Yeah. And that was, yeah, that was a, but it was fun because it was like, uh, you know, just Wild West, like you said, it yeah. was one of the first, first. There's always like that, it. like that, the pioneer stage. I feel like I'm kind of envious of you because I'm, I mean, a lot of us now that are coming in, like, I mean, I came to ZBrush around, Three, three, five was when I got started, and so it's like a little bit later in that process where mm-hmm. you're sort of going in and getting a chance to try everything out, and you kind of set set the bar in a way. It's like you're getting a chance to do those things and go through the hardest thing, which is figuring stuff out, probably having some failures, and learning from those things. And that's knowledge that doesn't transfer very well. You know, it's right, like a lot right. of us all would just love to know more about these things, but right. you know, it's like I just I think that's so great. So, so yeah. Thank you very much. That's it yeah. was it was a great time. Um, so the the Toy Story three was so well received that then it became now let's go bigger with this. Mm-hmm. Let's go, uh, let's go Disney Infinity with this. Yeah, and that's where that whole idea came from. I see. 
and um, my so they they decided to do it and in the beginning we're just like well how how are we going to do this how are we going to um, get these characters and be able to like share them and where are we going to make the save you know save all the information from them as you level them up and that kind of stuff yeah and that's just when uh, like Skylanders was just barely coming out and and we were, we started just like would that work for this you mm-hmm. know could we actually do toys and um, excuse me we were uh, we were game developers we weren't toy makers yeah. right and my my uh, my lead at the time his name is Christopher Wright he's a fantastic guy um, and uh, he he's like we if we're gonna do this we gotta have ZBrush we just gotta do it. We got to learn it. We just got to jump in. Yeah. You know? And, what version and of ZBrush was this? Do you know? Three. It was the end of three. Okay. And the beginning of four. Okay. So that's so, a really good time to be starting. Yeah. 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 And it's like Decimation Master was there. Mm-hmm. Um, this, But this was, you have to think about it. This was before, like, before the Gizmo, before Light Boolean. Before Dynamesh. Before, Di- before Dynamesh. Mm-hmm. All of that stuff. Yeah. would have really have helped. This yeah. was before Keyshot. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So... So we, uh, yeah, we just, and this was when everybody was making monsters with ZBrush. Mm-hmm. And we're like, we have to make these characters. Right. 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 We have to do super duper clean, well designed, appealing characters with something that is a, in, in inherently lumpy. Yeah. And right? at this time, the films, Pixar wasn't, they were using NURBS. Yeah. So yeah. even All like polygon modeling wasn't a thing in the, in the visual side of the animation side, right? right? So you guys are actually the first ones to really go in and use these tools this way. Right, right, right. And little did we know, but it was, and that's another Wild West moment because none of us knew ZBrush. So we were just like scrambling to learn it as fast as we could. Mm -hmm. So we were just like, you know, we'd have these moments where it's like check out this thing i just found and we come over we have this big gather That's around so the cool. desk and it's like check this out yeah and it's like Whoop, and they're like ah, you know <laughs> that kind of thing and uh, yeah. it was yeah and then everybody were, we were all sharing ideas and let's try it this way let's try it this way and uh one of the big things was um since they were toys we had to figure out a way to to get the toys to be to scale mm. and in the real world right right so we had we had the disc that the, the the characters sat on yeah and that disc had to be exactly precise for every single character down the line mm-hmm. and um we just didn't know how to do it and um I, I i don't know how i figured it out i think i saw uh uh gentle giant with they had had a ruler in one of their scenes oh, like yeah. a physical ruler yeah. in there i'm like i wonder if that would work and um, I realized that when you do the 3D printing, this was before the 3D printing hub. Right. Yes. And it was just before ex- scale master, before, before any, of, the any of that stuff. stuff. You're just like, oh, you know. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of thought about, well, if you come up with a common denominator, because when you export something, it looks at the largest thing in your file and uses that as a bounding box. Right. And so I'm like, well, what if you what if you made a ruler be the tallest thing in the file, mm-hmm. and that becomes the known bounding box, mm-hmm. and everything you export relative to that will work? Yeah, and it did. Yeah, and it was like, oh. yeah, and that yeah. was like a miracle. It's yeah, like, that was yeah, it. and I, yeah, it's funny because I still give away my ruler. Well, to I was gonna today. say you still use that in your streams. Yeah, I love I it. You really, you got your I ruler. Do. It's it's nice. Yeah. It's such a perfect tool, but. For a sculptor, it's like it's nice to have a physical tool. It's like that's yeah, kind of how yeah. you would just do it. Just I like that that connection instead of just going, I'm gonna set these numbers and just kick this thing out at this thing. Right. As, right. as a modeler, I, I like that a lot more. It's yep. more creative. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So with Infinity, we ha- we actually I put the disc with the ruler. So when you went to start a character, mm-hmm. it's like here's yeah. the thing. Don't touch it. Yep. Just build to build that. Build within that space. Yeah. Build yep. to that, and yep. you're good. That's yeah. so great. As long as you don't scale the ruler, you're good to go. So when you're, uh, I guess it's interesting that you you spend a lot of time with animation, motion capture, building game characters. I'm assuming using other tools and other mm-hmm. ways of modeling. Yep. And you're getting here now where you're actually being introduced to doing more stuff with ZBrush. Right. So it's when you get to this point, are you? Is this kind of where you started focusing all your efforts on character creation? And yeah, yeah. So I mean, throughout my whole career, I. I'd always been like, when I'd go home at night, 
I didn't animate in my spare time. Mm. I didn't rig in my spare time. I, I modeled characters. Okay. And I would do a lot of freela uh, freelance work. Okay. And all of the freelance work was modeling characters. And um, like when I applied at Acclaim, I, I applied for both an animator and a modeler. Mm -hmm. And they were actually like, yeah, you're a better modeler than an animator. Oh, okay. I'm like, all right, I'll take it. You yeah, know? All that extra yeah. time paid off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, um, and that's, that's kind of where it started to take off. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I like getting lost in it. Mm -hmm. You know, I love the, I love the challenge of trying to make a, some just an amazing concept that I'm in love with. I love the challenge of making that into 3D. Yeah. You know, just going, okay, what's this going to look like? Yeah. And just like, could, could I nail that? You know, and when, when it happens and when it clicks, it's just like, it fills my art cup. <laughs> right, and you, and that's like a constantly fulfilling thing, right? Yeah. Because you keep getting presented with new challenges, new characters that you right. can always kind of fulfill that desire. Right, right. And right. Style, the, <laughs> the kinds of work, the work that you do, is I think deceivingly, uh, deceivingly difficult to actually land. Like a lot of people love stylized right. work, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you deal with this in the stream, but it's like to do a monster creature and get into the texturing stuff. It's almost, and from what I see, is a little bit easier make stuff really dirty and crazy but silhouette and and yeah. the, the forms are tough right there's nothing to hide right I mean, it's like what the hulk says it's like you're an exposed nerve yes yeah oh, that's a good yeah. analogy it is it yeah. is everything is out there and you can see it all yeah. so um yeah and there's 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 tips and techniques to it but everybody you know on the on the surface it looks like oh you just simplify a character mm -hmm. and that's stylized mm -hmm. that's the farthest that's thing so from the not truth. it right yeah it's the farthest from the truth um there's so much that goes into it and like silhouette and mm -hmm. flow and just even how the light falls across the surface yeah you have to pay attention to well, and i do know i mean could because we've We've had many presentations from Zach Petrock and the <laughs> Disney right. animation team, and Disney has a very specific character archi architecture, mm -hmm. right? The three three heads, the proportions, the silhouette and curvature, especially, mm -hmm. and all the all these angles. There's sort of like like a rule book yeah. that you have to follow. Right. I'm just wondering for you guys in the games world, especially with going to like Disney Infinity, did you have mm -hmm. a were you kind of able to develop a, a like sort of a new playbook for this sort of style? So uh, we had to. We mm -hmm. we, we were. I, I want to say, or I don't want to say forced to, but mm -hmm. we were almost forced to because um, there was a meeting with uh, with the Avalanche heads and John Lasseter. Okay. When they when Toy Story was done and they were pitching this idea to, to them, um, they had this meeting and uh, my art director was telling me that uh, in this meeting they're like, we want to combine all these things, and and you know, and have them exist in the same world and they can play with each other and everything and it's like. John Lasseter was like, this is going to be a licensing nightmare. You know, mm -hmm. there's there's no way we could get, like, Marvel to buy into this or, or Star Wars to buy into mm -hmm. this. And I almost picture it happening like like, he, like he stood up and started walking out of the room, and then he goes, unless, <laughs> you know? And he's like, You're yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> unless these are toys, and all of the toys had a unique style, and you you push that style into all of these characters. Mm, and so they looked like they were all part of the same world. And since they were toys, they weren't the actual thing. They, It's not, you know, Johnny Depp's pirate character. It's right. not. It's not a perfect likeness of yeah, him, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a toy of him. Mm -hmm. And so that way, then they would all buy in and they did. I don't know what kind of strings they were able to pull and stuff yeah. like that. I'm, because there were still some rules we had to follow, Yeah, you know, but. Yeah, we kind of got away with some crazy wow. stuff. I'm glad you did, yeah. because honestly, <laughs> and a lot of people are, even though you know that universe has since sort of passed, mm -hmm. it's still, to me, I, and I think a lot of people agree, it's one of the coolest like depictions and stylizations that I've ever seen. Oh, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. I truly mean that. It's like this style of work, and I think that's why you get, you probably have so many followers and people that want to figure this stuff out, because it is, it's unique in some way, shape, or form. Oh, and, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's... So it took a it took a small army to come up with this yeah. look, um, and it, it was really fun again uh, Wild West with the look of the thing, because we were all pitching in. What does it mean? What does it mean? And then um, uh, my the, the concept artist his name's John Diesta. He really um, kind of harnessed almost like direct as a director style directed and kind of pulled in all of these pieces and parts and said, okay, this is what it's going to look like. And yeah. 
um, yeah, so he kind of directed the, the look and feel of the That's whole thing. Amazing. It does take a visionary to, yeah. I mean, it sounds like you guys are all contributing to this pot to kind yeah, of figure those parts and then right. all solidify. We agree that this is going to be it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it also evolved across the three, you know, Disney, Infinity 1, 2, and 3. Yeah. It evolved, like you see the characters in the first one, and yeah. then you look at the, the ones in the third one, and yeah. they just kind of, they're so much better in the third one. Plus, we... You know, like I said, we were game developers, not toy developers. Yeah. So that was a good and bad thing mm -hmm. um, because we didn't know what we didn't know. So we yeah. just pushed, we just pushed it to what we wanted to have on our shelves. Yeah. It's like this is this is the toy I want. Yeah. And not caring what manufacturing it would take to make that thing. And that was which, able to so last for a while. Right. So yeah. we would get we would get a you can click on a couple some of those. Yeah. Like in terms of like a generation, I see you got three point is <laughs> Right, right. So, yeah, this would be from from Disney th Infinity 3.0. So, uh, that's something you could let play in the background if you want. You can actually. And so we really, with with Marvel and Star Wars, we had to step it up because um, we had to. There you go. You can see that texture. Yes. See how it's soft on the top. So yep. those spheres and yeah, it comes in on the bottom. Um, so we, we had to step up our process and um, we had to kind of figure out how, how to better manufacture those characters. Like uh, if you look at uh, Anakin there, that's one of the newer, yeah, that's a three point. I right? love is this that figure two? too. That might be 2.0. This is three. Is it three? That's right. I can't remember. So you yeah, can't keep track, you guys probably did. I mean, there's I so many characters in those there's universes. <laughs> some more texture work in I, there. I love base. that so much. And there's some, there are some, um, th just, it was really interesting to see the process, uh, the toy making process and the keying, because we had uh, a few companies that were between us and the toy manufacturers where they would take it and cut it up and key it and, and make it manufacturable. Yeah. And just to kind of see that entire process was really fun and unique. Yeah. So Matt, Matt Thorpe posed him and I modeled him and so Matt came up with that really that the cool sort of twisty spirally yeah. effect and give it that sort of like energetic like flaring lightsaber effect. Right, right. That's very yeah, cool. It was fun. So I have a story on this guy. So uh, <laughs> this was this was the episode uh, seven, right? Yeah. So yeah. this was Four a big, things. big, big deal, yeah. and it was super secretive. They didn't want anybody to know what anything looked like, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't want to give us any assets to do this with either. So oh, it's like, wow. how, how are, are we going to make to this it? game with no asset, you know, no <laughs> reference? And so um, they made a deal where it's like, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to set up this special room, and we're going to fill it with cameras so we can see what you're doing in there, <laughs> and that you cannot bring cell phones in there. Mm -hmm. And we are only going to bring all the reference in on a hard drive, and we're just going to plug it into a laptop and then take it back out and take it back and put it in a... In a uh, safe right oh, wow. and yeah they literally like one guy could could bring up the hard drive it's like lock and key that is so wild and, and we could not take pictures we couldn't do anything with that because of fear of getting it out you know yeah. so <laughs> the only thing we could do is draw it so wow. we could look at the reference and sketch yeah so I modeled this guy based on a sketch that I did based off of the yeah the reference that, is, that we got I mean I understand was, because they're so that was such a big deal right it was a huge deal. that is wild yeah. to just think that that's what you had to model that out <laughs> yeah. and this is what the final product was yeah. from that yeah yeah I wonder if that actually contributes in some way maybe it helps because then you kind of you just can only rough in a few things right so you're not you don't even see the details mm -hmm. like Kylo's got all those crazy like zigzags and the mask and right. like you can just strip it down into a few right. simple shapes. Right, right. Um, yeah. And just like trying to figure out um, like the arm overlapping cloth mm -hmm. and how many different like shawl things he had on him. Yeah, because there was that shoulder drape and then mm -hmm. like the, the waistband and then the arms were kind of separate. Right. And having all of the, um, Matt Thorpe likes to call them twisty bits, but like <laughs> all the all the different layers of clothing because mm -hmm. underneath on the legs it looks like the arms and then there's another layer and then the floating layer on the top yeah it's like and then that it has to all tuck in underneath that belt and then they have to key it you know and yeah yeah it's it was pretty, pretty crazy and then we had to so marvel was behind the 
the bases. So they really wanted all of the Marvel characters to be in some kind of environment. Okay. You know, it's like, yeah, it's like we can't ground or right, whatever that is. Yeah. Right. And yeah. that, that uh, we, we liked it and we didn't. Um, we liked it because it would kind of unify the universes. So it's like everybody from Avengers gets kind of the same kind of base in the same world. It didn't look the same, but it had yeah. like the same features and stuff like that. Right. Um, so that was really cool. But we, as artists, as collectors, as sculptors, we wanted it to be super clean. Yeah. We almost wanted like a collector's version of these that are just gray with right. a simple base. Right. But so they're all consistent, like right, consistent like, bases. Right. Kind of like, like what this. you have. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I totally like understand this. that because like if you have. You have one that this is like specific to that his his sort of world is it's like you know that's him on uh, like Maz's planet right where he's on the you know he like flares out and they like blow up the building yep but yep. then like you get another one that could be totally different might be metal mm -hmm. and so like when those are sitting next to each other there's sort of like an inconsistency in yeah them. like I get that yeah that's like a collector's mentality right <laughs> yeah, right right for sure but it also allowed us to in introduce a lot of design into the bases um, like. Um, uh, my friend Ian Jacobs that worked, was on our team, he did a really, really cool, um, oh, what is his name? The, the magician from... Oh, uh, Doctor Strange? Doctor Strange, thank yeah. you. So, um, yeah, so, you know, Doctor Strange's symbol, yep. that actually became his base. That oh, really that's, cool symbol, that is pretty which, cool. Uh, which fun to model. sadly never got released, but <gasps> you, could, you could pull that up if you want. Uh, just do uh, Doctor Strange Infinity, because, like, I gotta sh I gotta give a shout out to Ian. He's please do. He's fantastic, and uh, he did this really great Doctor Strange model. And um, this was like the pinnacle of our right before. Yeah, it's, it just oh wow. It just yeah. He got the likeness of him and just he the flowing caves and it. all of that. But you can see see the yep. symbol on the base. That's just, super cool. Yeah, it's just amazing. That's and such a great hands. pose, man. Right. I love that pose. <laughs> it's amazing. Right, right. No, he nailed so, it. So uh, yeah, it was. And then there were some uh, there were some premium figures that were supposed to come out as well that got they got stopped right at the end right when they were in manufacturing well right about to go to manufacturing like yeah. all of the there's probably things. a lot of people out there that know about this that are yeah upset. and it's it's out so if you do a search for um, Hulk premium infinity I think it'll come up. So these were supposed to be like between eight and 12 oh, I've inches seen some tall. Of these images, yeah. Uh, so yeah, the second image there, yeah, that, that guy. I don't know if you can. You said three? So eight to 12 inches oh, eight tall. To 12. Okay, that is fairly large though in comparison. Oh, that's yeah, I think so, you can. That would have been so awesome. You can zoom in on that. So I think. So I only posed this guy. Mm -hmm. um, he started as the regular Hulk that. Um, like Ian Jacobs and Brian Allen worked on. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I did those rocks coming up and the lava and That's really awesome. all that, and and then re-sculpted some of his back mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And got yeah. that expression. Um, Such a dynamic so, pose. Yeah, it's, it was a lot of fun to do that. And there was going to be um, Jack Skellington, mm -hmm. uh, Elsa from Frozen, and just like the big ones, Darth Vader. Yeah. Lightning McQueen. There was like a, a whole lineup of premium figures that were going to be big. I can imagine so. the deliberation on which ones are going to get like passed through. <laughs> yeah, from that. it's got to yeah. be so nuts. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Hulkbuster was another one. Hulkbuster yeah. would have been awesome. Yeah. Oh. So imagine these as bookends. You know, like just giant bookends. Yeah, the Kyle so. at Pixel Logic was would. Like, oh yeah, Kyle. Oh, there's piece. Darth. There's Darth Vader, the big one. Yep. And Matt Thorpe did the Jack Skellington. Oh, and Buzz Lightyear. Brad Thorpe did. Or uh, Brad Thorpe. Brad Bolander, <laughs> Brad Bolander, yeah, Brad Bolander did Buzz, and so, it, so cool. interestingly enough, with the smoke on Buzz Lightyear, so smoke is one of the hardest things to sculpt mm. ever, yeah, without it making making it look like popcorn, right, or something like that, um, yes, to uh, get that sort of puffy texture, but then the motion, right. right, and and having it like start from somewhere and actually like have some motion to it and, mm -hmm. and kind of have some life to it. Yeah, oh, you, you guys did a see. great job, though. Yeah, Brad Brad really did it, nailed that one. Um, but just to get motion coming out of his jet pack and then kind of culminating down there. That's very um, cool. So we also did that uh, with Lightning McQueen, some smoke gathering around the wheel as it yeah. was like peeling out kind of a thing, had some smoke coming off. Yeah. There's, okay, so Chris Wright, no, I'm, Brad Bolander 
did uh, the premium version of her in her spring dress, but Chris Wright was the original. Okay. He did the original one. This so is, I mean, Brad, it's... Brad works at, you can click on that Peter Pan. So Jason Kim, the guy in that video, yeah. he, he modeled and... Uh, oh, wow. So he, he was doing Peter concept Pan. and he was also sculpting he, and modeling? Well, he wanted to learn modeling. And so I, I, um, I, I helped him come up and model this guy. I don't know where the... It's all backwards. Oh, so this was a... Uh, this was a D23 choice. Like, they let a bunch of people say, if you had a figure, what would it be? And they all said Peter Pan. Yeah, it's so, a classic, yeah. iconic figure. Yeah, Jason Kim worked on him. Oh, yeah. So he, the, I'm just kind of showing you some that were not released. Right. I did the, the bass to him and stuff. But, um, yeah, he, he turned out amazing. I did Tinkerbell. Yeah. Um, so that, that, that one turned out pretty what good. What is the, it's, it's a, the, the bass plate is, like, almost chrome. It's the it's like oh the, so okay so that's uh, that's another story with Keyshot so mm. Keyshot um, when we first did uh, Disney Infinity 1.0 we didn't have Keyshot we didn't have okay. the Keyshot bridge we didn't have any of that stuff yeah. and that's when um, Matt Thorpe and I did a uh, presentation here for the ZBrush Summit yep, that year I remember that um, and or I think it was the year after that for 2.0 yeah but before that I think I talked about it during that presentation actually but. Um, we had Maya, and we couldn't push our characters over from ZBrush into Maya and render them out for uh, like like this. We couldn't do a, a super nice beauty shot for marketing. Mm -hmm. So what we had to do was we had to uh, just make the this super crappy low poly version, UV it, rig it like really horribly, yeah. just enough to get the pose, and then render it in Maya. And then our concept team would have to paint out all oh, of the wow. problems and make it work. And they work so much overtime to get those to look good. Yeah. And then Keyshot comes along. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, guys, Keyshot, this is amazing. Amazing. Watch this. Boop. <laughs> Push one button and it goes over. And, and you, you know, it. even just out of the box, mm -hmm. it just looks incredible with poly paint. Right. We don't need UVs. Right. And we could just drop that clear shader on the the, the in, just make it look like clear plastic right and with in maya it was it was extremely that was a difficult. big deal for you guys this is like in, in comparison up, to yeah. the video that you're showing you're doing prints before mm -hmm. and you're trying to get the visualization of that i mean mm -hmm. sure you're still going to need that to kind of check like if like things look right right but was keyshot and zbrush and keyshot able to offer in another layer to that to absolutely kind of get so we would print out these big posters that we would send to the manufacturer mm -hmm. and um yeah, they would they would kind of come with that. There's one more. Uh, look up Jin, Jin Urso, Infinity. That's that was my last. That was your last character. Figure? Well, I did two mm. that didn't make it to print. Mm -hmm. uh, I did Hera. Oh, from, Hera's from um, uh, Clone Wars. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Clone Wars Hera. I only I did. It's J Y N, uh, and then E R S O. The um, Infinity Rogue One. Yeah, I haven't rendered her out yet, and she's not out in public really. But I, I showed her, I showed uh, her during, yeah. So that top left one. Let's see. Oh yeah. So, so I showed her during one of my Pixlogic live streams. I, I opened her model. That? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I opened her model and just kind of spun it around. Yeah. And then people took screenshots, and then it's like put it up. Yeah, put it. So this is uh, this is the character that. Uh, Brian Allen made. Oh, that's um, I never uh, saw this one. That's really yeah, it cool. never. So this oh, it's all pixelated, but that's the screenshot. Yeah, that's the <laughs> screenshot. So that was the last model that I worked on. Yeah, that's such a good figure too. I loved Rogue One. I was a really big fan. Yeah, they did a really great job. Really with it. great job. So it was fun because I um, I was happy with the uh, the likeness. Yeah, the likeness the, is the, spot on. Yeah, that that's a really. I mean, how do you? I'd love to talk about that a little bit. I mean, sure. you, people can watch your live streams and they can watch you sort of work in this in this sense. But how do you how do you methodically go about that? Trying to capture likeness, but then strip this down into a simplified form. Um, so it's it's. Uh, I was just talking to somebody about this the other day, but I feel like people's faces are like a safe that you have to crack, mm. right? And it's, it's you 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 have to like go tick 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 click yeah. tick yeah. tick tick click, you know. Yeah. And what I mean by that is. When you're trying to find a likeness, you get all the reference of that person from every kind of angle you can possibly find. 
and you're rotating them around, you're like, you start to notice unique features of that person, like how their cheekbones are and how yeah. their eye shapes are and how thick their eyebrows, whatever it is. Um, you can start to just push and pull and it's like tick, 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 tick. Like you might and pass that a little bit yep, and like miss yep. it a little bit and go back and right. adjust. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I tell my students, I'm like, if you ever seen the movie Hook? With, oh, with Robin Williams. Classic, yeah. Right? There's there's a scene where there's this little kid and he's like oh, he's like putting his hands yes, all over his face. Yeah, he's, he's like him. he's like where are Peter? Where and, are yeah, you? And, and, and he like he pulls there his you face are, Peter. back. Yeah, there you are, Peter. And it's it's that feeling yeah. when I'm trying to find a likeness. No, that's and a you're great just pulling a cheek around you. Oh, there you are, Jen. Yeah, there you are. That there's, is too There's perfect. your chin. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, he and, scrunches his face. Right. <laughs> We're totally. It's, so it's, it's like you're trying to uh, kind of find that character. And what it's, it's crazy because when you're doing caricature, sometimes a caricature will look more like the person than the person looks like mm. themselves. Yeah. Because sometimes you will find things about that person or that actor, actress is what it usually is where it's it's so part of them you know like um i'm trying to think oh sorry no <laughs> i'm trying to think okay. uh, we're getting so far <laughs> uh, um oh man what's uh, the joker from the first batman oh uh, uh heath ledger no or are you talking first. about uh jack nicholson jack nicholson yeah his eyebrows are yeah. such a part of him and when totally. he does that thing and so it's like so iconic that people push his eyebrows clear past what John Nicholson could ever do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, that's what I'm kind of talking about. Just accentuating so, those features. Yeah. To kind and of you, just yeah. Right. Right. And you try and like, you try and push past and really focus on the things that are making that character that character. Yeah. And and kind of, uh, di you know, uh, diminishing the things that don't. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like, like if they have a weak chin or whatever, you kind of pull that back, and mm -hmm. so it's it just depends on on who the character is and what yeah. makes them look like that person. So when you're doing caricature, the hardest people to caricature are the most plain faced people. Right. If they don't have any if like they, defining right. features, like if everything's maybe just too symmetrical and like right. too perfect, it's like it's probably difficult to do. Right. Yeah. Right. I can yeah. I can completely understand that. Well, and I, right. that's what I. Going back to like looking at stylized characters versus say a photorealistic uh, person or a creature, mm -hmm. it's like that is a big. That's like there's a connection there too. It's like you, mm -hmm. when you're trying to make a person look so photoreal, I mean there are challenges in that sense too, where you have to get things so perfect. Like mm -hmm. our eyes are naturally we're staring at each other on a daily basis. Right. So we we will catch imperfections and mm -hmm. somebody trying to do a likeness sculpt. Right. right Some right. people have figured out. On that side of the fence, how to get that right? Right. And then there's always like, if there's just one thing off, it's it can be an amazing piece, but you'll notice right. it, right? And right. It's, right. it's the same thing in the stylized character. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, this one is um, so I now what I've done is I've I'm not um, after Disney shut down, um, I worked for a company called Cast AR for a while. It was an altered reality thing. It yeah. was kind of fun. Um, but that was kind of a startup. They uh, ran out of funds, you know, okay. typical thing. Yeah. But this whole entire time, the last two years of that, um, well, I had done a couple of tutorials for Digital Tutors, which is now Portal Site. Yeah. And um, people enjoyed the way I taught and things like that. So then I decided I'm going to take this bigger mm -hmm. and, and make a big course. Yeah. And uh, I spent two, two and a half years in my off time after hours putting it together. Wow. And this is the character that I teach people how to, to how to make um, this. So this is a this is fan art of Kate Archer from No One Lives Forever. Okay. In the Disney Infinity style. Okay. So my my good friend and uh, concept artist from Disney Interactive, name, his name is uh, Josh Black. He he helped me. That that's his uh, concept. Yeah. So that's the concept he came up with. Awesome piece. And he was one of the concept artists from uh, Disney. In, Infinity and uh, anyway, Monolith like uh, tagged me on you know because Monolith made the original game yeah. and stuff like that. So, so they they gave you a shout out for this. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, which is awesome. That's really yeah. awesome. So this so. was the byproduct of that two years of just putting together this sort of course or program. Right. And this is the first one that you've kicked out. Yeah. Just first the and process. Ol first and only. First and only. Yeah. Well, I, I shouldn't say and only. Um, it's funny because uh, the character that got me the job at Avalanche a long time ago, the the one, and you can pull this up too if you want, uh, 
So do a search for Todd Harris, T-O-D, single D, Harris, uh, Sirloin, S 